probably have guessed, my presentation is going to be about the change, about the transformation that is happening at the LCBO and all the work that we're doing to create the LCBO uh, of the future. Um, the, 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 the retail world, uh, the alcohol beverage market in Ontario, uh, competition, customer loyalty, technology, everything is changing and it is changing in an exponential pace. And I think you probably feel it as well. So we at the LCBO are transforming to embrace the change. And uh, we started this transformation a couple of years ago and that's why I'm here to talk to you about that transformation. And by the way, once you embark on a transformation, you never finish because when you think you're finished, you're actually finished as an organization. <laughs> it's, it's continuous um, improvement. So it's very exciting to be here. So um, I will share with you how we're making those changes and how we're evolving. I just uh, taped um, a video, uh, a radio message of, to support our uh, uh, destination collection boutique sections in our stores. These are sections that um, uh, display a lot of unique products from specific regions, from Portugal, from Spain, uh, from Italy, from Australia, from Greece, of course. Uh, the store on the Danforth has 106 Greek products. It, it's, uh, it has the largest selection of Greek wines outside Greece. It's the same with the Spanish uh, store. It's the same with the Portuguese store. We're very, very proud of that. And what I said in that um, message was that when I was 14, I started uh, my career to become a chef. And uh, I had, it was a compulsory course, an enology course, uh, which is the study of wine, uh, that I had to take. And it's incredible how that one course sparked a career that spans 31 years with the wine industry and the passion and the passion for me to, to teach others about wine and about what I've learned. So that's really how my uh, career started. Um, from that one course. I joined the LCBO as a Director of Quality Assurance. Um, I moved within the organization to logistics, to supply chain, to merchandising, to IT, store development and real estate. Uh, basically just moved around until I became the Executive Vice President and two years ago the President and CEO of the LCBO. So they say that, uh, you know, give someone a good uh, job and then they have it for life and that's exactly what uh, what's happening with me. Um, at the LCBO I'm known as the guy who went from the chef to chief executive officer, um, from steel to wine uh, and beverage alcohol was a marriage in my opinion of science and art that really defined my uh, career. I tell people at the LCBO all the time to embrace change because if I, if I had not embraced change, I would not have been where I am today. Change is incredibly important, change is continuous. I tell people to persist and be resilient, to be agile and nimble, and that's the organization we're trying to build at the LCBO. Take some calculated risks, and I think you will be successful. So we are, as you saw from the video, a provincially owned organization. You are the owners of the LCBO, the taxpayers are the owners of the LCBO. We were created in 1927 after prohibition, that's uh, 91 years ago. We operate approximately 670 stores in Ontario. Um, we have net sales. Last year, about $6.2 billion, of which almost $2.2 billion was the net revenue that was returned back to the province of Ontario. That does not include taxes. The taxes is another seven, eight hundred million dollars. Um, we have we operate five warehouses in Ontario. The Durham warehouse is the most automated and the largest warehouse that we have and it is most automated and most of the automation in that facility actually came from within. It is innovation that was 
really created by our own people. And I'm very, very proud of that. Um, we test and taste every product that we sell at the LCBO. We chemically test it to ensure that it is safe and that it is authentic. And we review the labels to make sure that what is declared on the label is what's inside the bottle. So we test approximately 28, 29,000 products a year and for about 630,000 tests. We have a little bit more than 9,000 employees, almost half of them uh, casuals and contracts and the other half full time. Um, and I'm very proud to say that uh, we support a number of charities, a number of charitable organizations, in fact 28 of them, including uh, the United Way, uh, Mind Canada, the Four C Kids um, Hospitals, uh, Camp of Chigas, uh, We Care, March of Dimes, and many others, and we allow our stores to have their own charities as well. So. I have to tell you that one of the first things that I had to do when I came to Canada and when I got a job as a waiter at a restaurant was to go to the Salvation Army and buy a tuxedo, a shirt, and a, and a, and a coat at a very, very low price. And I know what it means to support these charities. And I was one of the people that actually received assistance from these charities. So, now, we recently refreshed our mission and vision statements to more accurately reflect who we are, ourselves, our customers, and the people of Ontario, our owners. And in fact, if you read the, the LCBO mission, it says we are the best in class. We strive to be best in class in the retail world, not just in the alcohol beverage world. So we take lessons from other retailers from around the world. It says custom, customer first, meaning that we're customer centric, because for us, we need to embed the customer in every decision that we make. Responsible retailer and wholesaler, and that speaks to the corporate social responsibility of the LCBO, whether it is checking at the counter that someone is not a minor, or ensuring that the product is safe, uh, or giving back to the community that we, we work in and we live in. Uh, supporting our local communities and delivering value to Ontarians. That's $6.2 billion, of which $2.2 billion is net uh, dividend or revenue. That's what we do. Now, while we are the only retailer in Ontario authorized to sell spirits, we are not a true monopoly in our marketplace. A lot of people say, well, you're just a monopoly. I hate that word, by the way. We're not a true monopoly. So the beer store, which is owned by three foreign companies, operates 473 stores in Ontario. They're not part of the LCBO. There are 516 winery retail stores and 184 on-site brewery stores that are run by the private sector. There are 450 grocery stores across the province today, uh, or eventually, that will be selling beer, wine, and cider. So that, this creates more choice for consumers. This creates also competition for the LCBO. And you know what? That's a good thing. Competition causes people to innovate and to move things to the next level. And we look at it that way, and that's exactly why we're transforming. Not that the LCBO was broken before. I mean, we wouldn't get to where we are today if, if I inherited a broken organization, but our future is changing and we need to change as well to make sure that we are successful and viable moving forward. Um, we obviously were the wholesaler to the grocers and to the TBS on imported products, and we look at the grocers the same way as we look at our retailers. So that forces us to be an ambidextrous organization. We were an ambidextrous, an ambidextrous organization before because we sell a product that is controlled, but we also do great marketing and we increase our sales. So we try to be ambidextrous, we try to be socially responsible, but also increase sales. Someone would say, well, how do you do that in a balanced way? It's the same with selling to the grocers who are actually competing with us. But for my supply chain, they're, they're good customers. So we treat them the same way as we treat our retail customers. 
Now, as we embarked on our transformation journey, we began a robust process to map out a long-term roadmap which resulted in the most comprehensive three-year strategic plan in the history of the LCBO. It was a clear plan that mapped out our mandate and goals, our objectives and ways of working within as well as with our partners, the suppliers and the agents. So we refocused our strategy across retail and e-commerce and wholesale. We did that to make sure that across all three of our channels we were focused on the one main thing that is important to our business. It's the customer. It's you. So in our retail remains our foundation. But we now have online or e-commerce, like Amazon. And um, our, digital, our digital channels now must grow to be an extension of our brand. And that's exactly the direction that we're moving. And of course, the wholesale customer, as I mentioned before, is just as important. Now, for us, uh, customer centricity, it's not really a project. It, it, it's a mindset. <coughs> customer centricity is, is data driven. We want to be a customer insights driven organization. How do you do that? Is you look at your big data and you try to turn it from a swamp to a pool where you can dissect and mine the data so you learn more about the customer so you can do a better job in serving the customer. You want to make sure that you meet the customer where the customer wants you to meet them, not where you want them to meet you. Our focus is product and experience. For those of you who visit our stores, I hope all of you, um, we have amazing product consultants that are so knowledgeable and so passionate about the products that they sell. And we have an amazing selection of products in our stores. And to me, that's customer centricity. Customer-centric means to be engaged and connected with our customers at the beginning of their journey, all through the journey, all the way to the end, consistently and seamlessly, and that's what we look to do. We need to be design-driven. Customer centricity translates into everything we do in all solutions, solutions, our policies, the processes, and uh, work functions. They all have a point of view, as I said before, of the customer. And we need to be agile and responsive. We need to empower the people that you meet at the store to be empowered to serve you better. And we also have to measure what's important. You know, measuring everything doesn't mean anything. It's measuring the right things that's gonna help you to get to where you need to get. The true customer engagement now binds together the physical and digital experiences to create a meaningful impact and a new dimension of interaction and engagement with the customer. And we call that Fidgetal. <laughs> it's created that word. Now, <coughs> Fidgetal is really about creating an ecosystem between the brand and consumer across physical and digital spaces. And these spaces are today, they're the online, uh, in-store, over the phone, mobile, and desktop, or any appliance that they may think in the future, and I'm sure that there are many appliances that are coming. Even a watch today could be used as an appliance to place an order. So understanding that this is a symbiotic uh, relationship is critical. And you know what? Most modern customers today, the, we call them millennials, do not distinguish an offline from an online world. For them, there is really no line. This is where we're going. That's the digital world. So, in, uh, in Korea, Tesco, which is known Home Plus, this didn't click, right? Yeah, they, they've created this virtual store. Uh, Tesco in Korea doesn't have most, uh, as many stores as other retailers, but they felt that by doing that, they will be able to compete and do better than the rest of them. So they created this virtual store on the metro platform, the, met the train metro uh, platforms. So where you can use your, your uh, smartphone and you can scan any of the products that Tesco sells and it places an order and by the time you get home, that order is ready for you to pick up at one of the stores of your choice uh, and it's called click and collect. 
And that's basically, again, the direction that the retail industry is going. It's, it's the online, it's uh, the click and collect, and so on. In fact, uh, there is a collaboration right now here between Loblos and Metrolinx that they're doing this. And we're starting to do some of that as well. So this is a genuine move beyond delivering uh, a one-dimensional customer experience to a seamless experience through a series of channels. It's exciting. In order to create that seamless experience and to meet our customers where they want us to meet them, we are investing in our online, our e-commerce platform. Um, this is an area where our customers are asking for. This is an area where it provides convenience. People say I can go to Loblos or Sobis and I can pick up my wine and beer from them because it's convenient. And there are customers, as I, there, we wholesale to them. So, but this is also convenience. You place your order and the next day we deliver it to your home or you can pick it up at any of our stores, your choice, free of charge. Sales last year totaled $11.3 million and sales have doubled since this time last year. So we've been doing this, this for a couple of years now. We, we were a bit of a late coming into this business because we wanted to get this right because of the social responsibility component. We didn't want to deliver it to a home where a minor picked up the product, so we made sure we had checked all the boxes and worked with Canada Post to make sure that they had the same procedures and guidelines that we have. And I'm happy to say that we've been doing this for two years now and we haven't had a single incident where one of our products was delivered to a home and, and was picked up by uh, an underage person. So we now have approximately a little bit more than 9,000 products on the menu for online. Um, and a third of those are actually unique products that you can't find at the LCBO. So that's another enticement for people to go to online. Last November, we launched next day delivery for the holiday period, which contributed to about $3.8 million uh, in sales, or 18,500 orders. Uh, and you know, 50% of those sales are actually next day delivery. Um, and the site has received almost 21 million visits. 70% of the orders are delivered to a store and 30% are actually home deliveries. So this is an area where we're going to invest more, but we also can't ignore the specific role of the mobile commerce in today's global market. Predictions show that by 2020, there will be almost 6 billion smartphones in the world. It's incredible. Everybody has a smartphone and that the mobile ecosystem will support 20 million jobs. So we need to seize opportunities and respond through service and innovation in this area. So we saw that approximately 60% of online traffic was actually coming from mobile, so we prioritize an upgrade to our map, uh, to our uh, app, um, and um, today you can actually use your, on your, uh, your um, mobile phone a very fast, a very secure, and a very user-friendly experience. So what are we doing next? Um, there are a lot of exciting things that uh, we're working to attract uh, online customers and to really meet them where they would like us uh, with the offerings that they're looking for. Uh, and we want to attract more and more customers um, online. Our plans are all guided by three key principles. The first one is going digital. Uh, our efforts to create a seamless experience across our retail and digital channels for all of our customers, whether it is a retail customer or a wholesale customer, to us, we would like them to be able to use the online. In fact, we sell to restaurants. We call them licensees. And our sales are between six and seven hundred million dollars to licensees. Every one of them could actually go online in the future, place an order and have their product delivered to their restaurants. In fact, we can go a step further and say, if you allow me to have access to your inventory in the back room, I can ship that product to you without you placing an order and I'll make sure that I have that inventory in my warehouse, you don't have to have it in your warehouse. And that also helps me to take the people out of the back room 
our customer sales reps and put them at the front room so they can service the customer better. So there are a lot of efficiencies that you can gain out of being having the online. Um, we're looking at the global market. What that means is that we want you, when you're traveling to Europe or anywhere in the world and you're in Tuscany and you tasted a product at a restaurant or a winery that you really liked, you can come back and tell us and we'll have that shipped uh, directly to your home through DHL, through our online. We do it now, a lot of you don't know that we have what's called private ordering and consignment, but it takes a long time and we're not really set up for that. So this is something that Within a year or so, once we roll out our order management system, we'll be able to do that. It's the global market. So now we open, the world will become our shopping basket. And of course, we're always mindful of social responsibility. We want to make sure that we enhance our processes, procedures, and systems to, to ensure that our products don't make it in the hands of minors or intoxicated people. So some other priorities, I think the ability to pre-order and pre-populate carts. Uh, to do same day delivery, believe it or not, some people would like their wine the same day. <laughs> so we are working on that as well. Uh, and also to offer exclusive uh, vintages offers. I'll tell you, if you're having a dinner tonight and, and you're missing a bottle of wine and you just thought of it, there's nothing wrong with just placing an order online and we'll have it delivered to you by 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and you'd be surprised how many people would like to do that. So, we're working on what I called before click and collect, just like uh, what they do in Korea, where you place your order and you come by the store and pick it up. How many of you use Starbucks? Where you can actually use your mobile and they have your coffee ready at the corner and you pick it up? It's no different than that. So, and of course, Personalization is something that is happening in many, many retailers today. Uh, we have established a My LCBO newsletter email distribution. Customers receive personalized wine recommendations, food pairings, and uh, the relevant content. We have achieved 65% average open rate, more than double of the industry average. Uh, and of course, social media is growing. We have one product consultant who has 21,000 followers. Victor, the guy that you see here, he has 21, we're gonna clone this guy. He's got 21,000 followers, it's amazing. So, and we're in LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, um, and, and our people are doing a wonderful job. Again, many of the millennials today, this is the way they operate, this is the way they buy. They come into the store and they love to see a story. They love to scan and learn. They love to hear what you said about a product. That's social media and that's the space that we are moving into. That's the digital strategy that we're following. Now, we are enhancing our in-store aesthetics as well with uh, you know, atmospheric digital screens with active sights and sounds with interactive digital um, uh, screens, engaging customers directly with uh, the content. Interactive digital screens will facilitate the ability to have customers engage directly with content to stores, whether by using their mobile to scan a screen for the list of ingredients uh, to a, a cocktail that, that they wanted to create at home or to order online exclusives while shopping online as well. And by the way, uh, the new store layouts are more inviting, they're more engaging, they're fun, they're attractive, they're easy to navigate through. If you haven't seen some of the new stores that we're rolling out, please visit one of the LCBO stores. They are fun. To me, it's just like your Toys R Us. <laughs> a, a couple of years ago, we, we teamed up with a company out of uh, Waterloo called Communitech, which is an innovation hub. And we, we leased space there. And we have four co-op students and a director there uh, who has a PhD in, in engineering who's leading that group. So we dream of what we want at head office and we send it to these guys and guys and girls and they brainstorm and they create apps for us. And we're getting some really good technology out of that innovation hub. By the way, the only, the first crown agency to do that. 
and now many others are following us, uh, including WSIB and many others from within the Ontario government. So we're very proud of that. And I can tell you that a lot of the innovation that comes out of this hub is excellent. Now, the role of uh, uh, corporate social responsibility is unquestionably incredibly important in our business today, in any business. As a retailer and distributor of beverage alcohol, the opportunities to contribute in this space are endless and have always been at the heart of the LCBO. One area that really resonates with me and uh, that many companies around the world are starting to monitor is the notion of the triple bottom line, what I just mentioned before, <coughs> which is people, planet, and profit. If you take care of your people and the planet, it contributes to your bottom line. It helps your people, their engagement, it reduces absenteeism, it reduces presenteeism, um, it get, you gain efficiencies and you save the environment and you're ethical and you treat your people well. So this is, this is the direction that the LCBO is moving. Take account of the full cost of doing business by doing that. Not only helps build trust and reputation for your organization, but an increasing number of executives believe that the bottom, the, the TBL, can add to profitability. And I know companies like, for example, Marks and Spencer, their goal to become the world's most sustainable major retailer, achieved making its UK business carbon neutral, and have now come out with another 100 commitments to reach by 2020. And that's just Marks and Spencer as, a, as, a, as an example many other companies are moving towards sustainability. So what we're doing right now is we're training our own people to understand sustainability because everybody has a different definition of what's, what sustainability is. And in fact, there isn't a real guideline around the world as to what is sustainability. The European Union, the United States, Canada, they don't have a standard. If you want to talk about organic, they'll tell you what organic is. If you want to talk about biodynamic, they'll tell you that Demeter standard. Uh, but if you talk about sustainability, nobody can really tell you. Everybody has their own interpretation. So what we're trying to do at the LCBO is to set up a standard which is flexible enough for our suppliers to meet, but not loose enough not to be taken seriously. It's a challenge, but being the largest um, liquor buyer, one of the largest liquor buyers in the world, we also carry a lot of leverage. Uh, for example, we set up the lightweight glass a few years ago and now it became the Canada bottle around the world uh, at first. We can do the same with sustainability and that's the direction that we are moving. Um, always taking care is our logo when it comes to our own corporate social responsibility. Um, our CSR is based on four pillars the environment or environmental sustainability, product quality and safety, and I talked to you about what we're doing in, in quality assurance, the community involvement and fundraising with all those agencies that we try to support, and responsible retailing, everything we do at the store, our people are well, well trained to ensure that whatever we do it is done in a socially responsible manner. And of course, we go beyond numbers. Some things you really cannot accurately measure, such as the customer loyalty and experience to us. Customer loyalty is incredibly important, and we do everything we can to ensure that we attract the customer back to the LCBO. Trade partner feedback. The only way we can get better is by asking our customers and our suppliers what did we what area did we dissatisfy? because satisfying is easy, dissatisfying is something that you need to know to fix. You know, Chris Hatfield used to always say that, you know, when I'm up in space, the first thing I need to do is to fix the problem rather than to celebrate what we've done. Because if I don't fix that problem, I may not be able to come back. It's the same with the customer. If you can't fix the problem that dissatisfies the customer, you can celebrate as long as you want to. But you need to be able to fix the problem first. Employee engagement, again, incredibly important for us. An engaged employee is key to customer centricity. It, uh, as I said before, I'm just the expensive overhead. It's the employees that really make 
the LCBO. You can have automation, you can have technology, you can have beautiful stores, but if you don't have the right people, which is your human capital, you will get nowhere. And culture is the foundation. They say that culture eats strategy. Culture is a choice. And we have made a choice to move in a very different direction in the next few years. And we've started that a couple of years ago. And I'm inspired by the comments, unsolicited comments that we're getting from our customers, from our suppliers, from our agents, from our own owner and our own people in terms of how the culture is, change, is changing, which is one of customer centricity, one of collaboration, and one of accountability. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to